Welcome to the Bible Breakdown. It's a black man and woman in America who no longer identify as believers. This show contains adult languages, themes, and isn't meant for children. As black people, we respect the history of the black church in America, but its current state is massively abusive, and we think the Bible might be part of the problem. Listen and let us know what you think. Peace. Welcome back to The Breakdown. Yes, welcome back to Bible Breakdown Podcast. I'm, I'm Kat. And I am T. I also wanted to shout out to our listeners in Australia. You guys are some of our most consistent listeners, so I really, really appreciate you guys um, for tuning in. Yeah. So reach out to us, Australia. I, want, I don't know very much about Australia. They don't teach us much. Uh, what do you know about Australia besides kangaroos? I wouldn't even say that. That's very fucking good. That's what I'm doing. I'm making a point uh, about our ignorance. Idiotic. That's why I want them to reach no, out. But, but I know more about Australia. Actually, I was just watching a video. I mean, I don't know like a shit ton, but like um <clears throat> like a lot of what the video I was watching was specifically talking about how like a lot of people in Australia mostly live on like the coast. So like, you know, how here we live everywhere like in the interior of the United States like a lot of in australia since the interior is just like you know desert or poisonous wilderness yes like a lot of people don't live in the interior of australia but um fun fact they actually have a i don't know if it's a cia satellite base or some type of like i have heard of that that's yeah and then like the reason they picked that was because it's so remote yeah it's so remote so it would be easy for them to like you know see if um an invasion was coming from all sides because whatever although if an invasion was coming it wouldn't fucking matter because you couldn't leave because you're in the middle but whatever Whatever. um and but also that was the place that like whatever satellite they control it's just easier from them for them to do it from oh okay just from the geography it connects to like yeah all the other ones that makes sense like to that. me i'd also i'm curious about the um indigenous people of australia we definitely don't learn anything about them here in uh the united we states don't. so um yeah reach out and kuji that's the other thing i know about australia kuji oh yeah is that, yeah big yeah that shit that was an australian um, company but we're doing that thing we do where we don't read the bible and we just talk about interesting things that's what this podcast should mostly it should. but cat tries to put us on some fucking time I limit do. so let's just get into it makes it, for good podcasting okay so it, numbers 34 from the new revised standard version of the bible let's go the boundaries of the land the lord spoke to moses saying command the israelites and say to them when you enter the land of canaan this is the land that shall fall to you for an inheritance, the land of Canaan, defined by its boundaries. Your south sector shall extend from the wilderness of Zen along the east side of Eden. Your southern boundary shall be again from the end of the Dead Sea on the east. Your boundary shall turn south at the ac- ascent of Akrabim and across to Zen. And its outer limit shall be the south of Kadesh Barnea. Then it shall go to Hazar Adadar and cross to Asmon. The boundary shall turn from Asmon to the Wadi of Egypt, and its termination shall be at the sea. For the west boundary, you shall have the great sea and its coast. This shall be your western boundary. This shall be your northern boundary. From the great sea, you shall mark out your line to Mount Hor. From Mount Hor, you shall mark it out to Lebo Hamath. And the outer limit of the boundary shall be at Zedad. Then the boundary shall ex- extend to Zipron, and its end shall be at Hazar Enan. This shall be your northern boundary. You shall mark your eastern boundary from Hazar Enan to Shepham, and the boundary shall continue down from Shepham to Ribla, to, on the east side of Ayan. The boundary shall go down and reach the eastern slope of the Sea of Chinnereth. And the boundary shall go down to the Jordan, and its end shall be at the Dead Sea. This shall be your land with its boundaries all around. Moses commanded the Israelites, saying, This is the land that you shall inherit by lot, which the Lord has commanded to give nine tribes and to the half-tribe. For the tribe of the Reubenites by their ancestral houses and the tribe of the Gadites by their ancestral houses have taken their inheritance and have also the half-tribe of Manasseh. 
The two tribes and the half tribe have taken their inheritance beyond the Jordan at Jericho eastward toward the sunrise. Tribal leaders. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, these are the names of the men who shall apportion the land for your inheritance. The priest Eleazar and Joshua, son of Nun, you should take one leader of every tribe to apportion the land for inheritance. These are the names of the men of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jephna, of the tribe of the Simeonites, Shemel, son of Amahud, of the tribe of Benjamin, Eladad, son of Shizlon, of the tribe of the Danites, of leader Buki, son of Jogli, of the Josephites, the tribe of the Manassites, as leader Haniel, son of Ephod, and of the tribe of the Ephraimites, a leader Kemuel, son of Sithan, of the tribe of the Zebulites, a leader Eli Zaphon, son of Parsh, Parnot, of the tribe of the Ich Issachrites, a leader Patiel, son of Azan, and of the tribe of the Asherites, a leader Ahud, son of Silomoi, Silomi, of the tribe of the Naphtalites, a leader. Pedahel, son of Emahud, these were the ones whom the Lord commanded and apportioned to apportion the inheritance for the Israelites in the land of Canaan. Thanks be to God. Yeah, thanks be to God. Um, I don't really have any notes there. I mean, a lot of this is just like setting the boundaries for the lands and everybody's getting to know what their share yeah. is. And it seems like the Lord is really into real estate. Oh, one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah, um, and what bothers me is that people think this is still legitimate. Um, because it's in the Bible, and they feel yeah. like that. Well, a, a lot of the way that modern Christian theology, at least Western Christian theology, works out now is that basically Jesus can't come back for the apocalypse until the Jews are in the land that God, the Lord promised them so that he can kill them for rejecting Jesus and bring about the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. So it's always, in, it's and always so interesting they, to me too, because, you know, the United States is very pro Israel and pretty much will like, it's based on the idea that like, you know, the Hebrews are supposed to be in this land. So that our, the United States is pro-Israel because they're pro -oil. Well, that too, but a lot of it has to do, like, even the fact that the Israel was allowed to be established, was that in, like, the 40s is because the people in charge, like, it was this, you know, still sort of colonial mindset of, like, we get to apportion this land, even though there's already some people living here, um, also known as the Palestinians. And so they basically don't pay any attention to the fact that they've been there for hundreds, if not thousands of years, because they're using the Bible as a guide for real estate, you know, transactions. Uh, I think it's a mix of that, but I also think a lot of it has to do with like the, uh, like I literally was just watching a video about CIA and how they take over countries and how. But oil, we don't, we don't, um, we don't have this policy for any other countries because no other countries are really mentioned in the Bible and the Israelites. But no other countries also provide the resources. Yeah, they the do. Like, um, we get a lot of oil from Russia and Africa and yeah, other we're, places we're, in the Middle East. We're also currently in a fucking war right. with them. I'm not disagreeing yeah. with what you're saying. I'm, I'm just actually saying trying to highlight this is also to the Middle East and the fact that we just ran. Well, not we. It was really the British who gave this, who quote unquote gave this land to the Israelis. And it was based on a okay. biblical principle. And I feel like no one ever talks about it. Like, and the fact that it's still a problem because they gave away land that isn't theirs. Fair. So that's all I'm saying. Like, yeah, we destabilize countries all the time, especially in South America and the Caribbean. Like anything, like my whole thing is too, it's like there's this also fear of black leadership. And that's why a lot of times too, they destabilize these governments. But I digress. I don't like it. Are you Christian yet? I'm not, but in Numbers 35, uh, this could, could be, be the one. I do it, so, cities for the Levites. In the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the Israelites to give from the inheritance that they possess towns for the Levites to live in 
You shall also give it to the Levites' pastor's lands surrounding the towns. The towns shall be theirs to live in, and their pastor lands shall be for their cattle, for their livestock, and for their animals. The pastor lands of the towns, which you shall give to the Levites, shall reach from the wall of the town outward a thousand cubits all around. You shall measure outside the town for the east side two thousand cubits, for the south side two thousand cubits, for the west side two thousand cubits, for the north side two thousand cubits, with the town in the middle. This shall belong to them as pasture land for their towns. The towns that give you to the Levites shall the towns that you give to the Levites shall include the six cities of refuge where you shall permit a slayer to flee. And in addition to them you shall give forty two towns. The towns that you give to the Levites shall total 48 with their pasture lands and as for the towns that you shall give for the possession of the israelites from the larger tribes you shall take many and from the smaller tribes you shall take few each in proportion to the inheritance that it obtains and shall give of its towns to the levites uh cities of refuge the town spoke to moses the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall select cities to be cities of refuge for you, so that a slayer who kills a person without intent may flee there. The cities shall be for you a refuge from the avenger, so that the slayer may not die until there is a trial before the congregation. The cities that you designate shall be six cities of refuge for you. You shall designate three cities beyond the Jordan and three cities in the Can in the land land of Canaan to be cities of refuge. These city, these six cities shall serve as refuge for the Israelites, for the resident or transient alien among them, so that anyone who kills a person without intent may flee there. Concerning murder and blood revenge, but anyone who strikes another with an iron object and death ensure and death ensues. Uh, is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. Or anyone who strikes anyone with a stone in hand that could cause death and death ensues is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. Or anyone who strikes another with a weapon of wood in hand that could cause death and death ensues is a murderer. And that murderer shall be put to death. The avenger of blood is the one who shall put the murderer to death. And when they meet, the avenger of blood shall execute the sentence. Likewise, if someone pushes another from a uh, from hatred or hurts something at another or hurls something at another uh, lying in wait and death ensues or an enmity strikes anyone with the land and death ensues then the one who struck the blow shall be put to death that person is a murderer the avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when they meet but if anyone pushes another suddenly without enmity or hurts or hurls any uh, object without lying in wait or while handling any stone that could cause death unintentionally drops in on another and death ensues though they were not enemies and no harm was intended then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the avenger of blood in accordance with these ordinances and the congregation shall rescue the slayer from the avenger of blood then the congregation shall send the slayer back to the original city of refuge the slayer shall live in it until the until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the holy oil but if the slayer shall at any time go outside the bounds of the original city of refuge and is found by the avenger of blood outside the bounds of the city of refuge and is killed by the avenger no blood guilt shall be incurred for the slayer must remain in the city of refuge until the death of the high priest but after the death of the high priest the slayer may return home these things shall be a statute and ordinance for you throughout your generations wherever you live. If anyone kills another, the murderer shall be put to death on the evidence of witness, but no one shall be put to death on the testimony of a single witness. Moreover, you shall accept no ransom for the life of a murderer who is subject to the death penalty. A murderer shall be put to death, nor shall you accept ransom for one who has fled to a city of refuge, enabling the fugitive to return to live in the land before the death of the high priest. You shall pollute, you shall not pollute the land in which you live, for blood pollutes the land, and no explanation can be made for the land for the blood that is shed in it except by the blood of the one who shed it. You shall not defile the land in which you live, in which I also dwell, for I, the Lord, dwell among the Israelites. Thanks be to God. Um, yeah. Okay, so what I've taken from that is um, the Lord is kind of down with uh, capital punishment. So yeah. um, Seems on brand. It is definitely um 
It's interesting that they still wanted to set up refuge cities, though, for people to escape to if you accidentally kill someone. Yeah. Um, I guess. I don't know. This is, <laughs> again, to me, not especially wise. To me, it just doesn't say truly this must be from the gods. This just sounds like, you know, some people wandering in the desert stuff, and we just kind of got to figure things out as we go. I mean, so far, that's all that has been proven. Although, again, I've said many times that, uh, you know, I'm not here. I'm not going to spend a lot of my life trying to figure this out. I'm just going to, you know, do what I feel like is necessary to be a decent human being. And, uh, you know, when I get to those pearly gates, if they even exist, then, uh, you know, I'll have that conversation. Then. Yeah, I really liked that video you sent me on Instagram with J- I can never I can't Jadena. Jadena. Um, he's very interesting. I like him. He you what? Uh, he, I like him as artist. a as a from what I've seen as a as him as a a person, you know, an artist or whatever. Um, I didn't really I wasn't really interested in his music, and I became a follower of his on social media randomly i think i was listening to like some podcast and they had interviewed him on there and so um i just went to go listen to like what the fuck he was talking about and he just talked about his upbringing and he talked about like his relationship style he's actually also into polyamory he seems like a very alternative dude like a very much a very free thinker yeah i and right up my alley he 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 would go on that list of guys i would just want to sit down and have a beer with or something um, yeah, but it was very interesting where he was just talking about how, like, uh, his perception of the afterlife, where it's just like, man, there's, you might as well just live like there isn't one, because we don't know. And everybody has some version of the afterlife, and some people don't believe in one at all. Like, we're pretty, you might as well just, I don't know, there's so much uncertainty, but um, I really enjoyed that. And maybe we can include the link to that, because it, it was very interesting. But yeah, still nothing, um... Nothing that's convincing me that this is the word of God. Yeah, I echo that sentiment of his and then we can move on. I would just say that um, one of the contrast of that statement about basically living like there isn't one is I feel like a lot of people and we've brought this up, I think, on the podcast before where they'll be like, well, I don't want to live in a world where there isn't a God because if there isn't a God, what's to stop me from murdering or raping? And I feel like that is not the point we should be taking from any of this. So I just want to say that if that is, if this is the only thing that is stopping you from murdering, raping, doing harmful things to other humans, then maybe we should, uh, you know, seek other ways yeah, to it's like, help Are you, you okay? Do you need some water? <laughs> like, <laughs> or therapy. Yeah. Water, water and therapy. therapy. And once again, this also doesn't keep people from doing like horrible things. Like the prisons not. aren't filled with atheists it's mostly very religious people so yeah um but that's another conversation anyway moving (laughs) on to the last the last uh not book the last chapter of this book this is exciting we're moving on Deuteronomy after this but yes this is the last one and it's about women so it's very apropos that I'd be reading it so here I go numbers 36 marriage of female heirs the heads of the ancestral houses of the clans of the descendants of Gilead, son of Nikar, son of Manasseh, of the Dan- of the Josephite clans, came forward and spoke in the presence of Moses and the leaders, and the heads of the ancestral houses of the Israelites. They said, The Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for inheritance by lot to the Israelites, and my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of our brother Zelo had to his daughters. But if they are married into another Israelite tribe, then their inheritance will be taken from the inheritance of our ancestors and added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they married. So it will be taken away from the allotted portion of our inheritance. And when the Jubilee of the Israelites comes, then their inheritance will be added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they have married, and their inheritance will be taken from the inheritance of our ancestral tribe. 
Then Moses commanded the Israelites according to the word of the Lord, saying, The descendants of the tribe of Joseph are right in what they are saying. This is what the Lord commands concerning the daughters of Zephohad. Let them marry whom they think best. Only it must be into the clan of their father's tribe that they are married, so that no inheritance of the Israelites shall be transferred from one tribe to another. For all Israelites shall retain the inheritance of their ancestral tribes. Every daughter who possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the Israelites shall marry one from the clan of her father's tribe, so that all the Israelites may continue to possess their ancestral inheritance. No inheritance shall be trans transferred from one tribe to another, for each of the tribes of the Israelites shall retain its own inheritance. The daughters of Zephohad did as the Lord said, had... <clears throat> The daughters of Zelophehad did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Malha, Tirzah, Hogla, Milka, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, married sons of their father's brothers. Gross. They were married into the clans of the descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of their father's clan. These are the commandments and ordinance that the Lord commanded through Moses to the Israelites in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. Thanks be to God. We read numbers. We did. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I'm interpreting this right, because this seems similar to one of the last uh, chapters that we read where it was talking about the women keeping the these are the same chicks the daughters of Zelophehad. yeah these yeah, are the same okay chicks. great great so i mean i guess they were favored a little bit in a, in a way although they had to marry brothers so, yeah it sounds like uh, they yeah. had to marry their is it their cousins they had to marry some of their yeah. oh their uncles so they married oh they married Gross. no cousins they married sons of their father's brothers so that's first cousins yeah you know, side tangent a little bit. I don't, as a porn mm. watcher, I don't understand the uh, the obsession of like fucking the stepdad. Step I hate the mom, launch pad of stepson, Pornhub. Like, or the launch yeah, I don't, page I, of I don't, Pornhub. It's... I don't. I don't get that. Like, I. It's to the point now. I can't even. I don't even look at the title. Like I <laughs> you just, just want the thumbnail. I know it's like you to blur <laughs> out the words. I don't need any words. Like, I, but I say that because I mean, this seems to be a thing throughout humanity. Like, it's not like it just only exists on you know that part of the internet. Like, people, you know, da fathers fuck their daughters all the time. Yeah, um, globally. Clearly, in the Bible, uncles are you know doing like marrying you know whatever um their nieces or whatever so like it just it's just really fucking weird and i don't i don't i don't i don't get it maybe maybe i'm missing out on something i don't know but it's not something i've ever desired or thought about like it's i mean you know like obviously i could recognize if somebody in my family is you know attractive it's but not your kink it yeah. stops there yeah, yeah as soon like as i find out we're related <laughs> my lady boner goes away it's like I'm I'm not into this yeah. anymore. This is, but a lot of people do fuck their cousins though. That we have that phrase here in like America, kissing cousins. Like a, some people do, and to me, it's just a. Do you think that's just a South thing? No, I don't. I think a lot of people people don't like to admit it, but a lot of people's first sexual experiences are with family members at way too it's, young it's, ages. Like it's it's fairly it's not like yeah. great. You know, it's fairly common. So. Um, yeah, that's what I mostly took from this is that they really don't like intermarriage, even though that is better genetically yeah. than staying yeah. in, like they want you to stay within your own clan. And once again, when you think about different European, um, and it, like you said, it's, it's pretty global. It's not even just people who listen to this, like, uh, cause you learn about like the Egyptians, like they inbred a lot, a lot of, um, different dynasties yeah. over the world there was a lot of inbreeding because they wanted to keep the money in house and back in this time they didn't realize how bad inbreeding is for genetic diversity and i think they figured it out now and that's why they had to take different measures where it's just like we have to instill these laws to keep the the wealth amongst the yeah like net. there's other ways to you know but you know back in these days like they said you don't want money going out into and once again i don't 
It it's is. greed, man. It's just it's all motivated and by greed. And it's still telling women who they can marry, or, or not just women, but the men too. That you're just you're just saying like you because yeah. they definitely don't want you marrying anyone, any of the outsiders. Like, don't marry an Amorite. We will freaking you know, we will murk yeah. you. So, um, I and when I was growing up too, there the religious environments like the school that I went to, they were not like once again like the closest thing we'd have now is sort of interracial dating, and they don't like that stuff. They're like, let's, you know, keep things white. And let's keep it white. Yeah, let's keep it right. So um once again, I see how a lot of our a lot of bad social habits that we have kind of come from the idea of getting morality from the Bible. Which I'm still not seeing a ton of morality. Like, cause even though like when we originally read this chapter or I read about the daughters of Zelophehad, had. I don't know if I'm even saying that right, but at first it seemed progressive because they're like, hey, women can inherit property from their dads. It's like, OK, that's cool. But it's like, but, you know, if you inherit property from your dad, you can't marry into one of the other clans because you take that inheritance with you and we want to keep it here. So I think we, you know, we took one step forward and two steps back. Oh, so we're doing sort of a human rights yeah. cha-cha. And yeah. to me, I just yeah. stand very firmly in the fact that people have bodily autonomy and should be able to make decisions for themselves without having to worry about being murdered for offending the religious sensibilities of others. I think we're going to be hard pressed to try to change those things within society. Um, this is something I've actually talked a lot about to my therapist, to yourself, to others. I just, <sighs> I'm torn because. Whereas I agree with a lot of the things that you say. Thank you. My um, capacity to change has been skewed by the fact that I just don't have that faith in people enough. Um, I don't. Whereas why, like a lot of my argument is always like, if you want to change something, you actually have to infiltrate it by almost becoming like it. And then you can change it, which we can argue whether that's a good method or not. But um, that's just kind of where I've been at lately is just like I don't I think the only way to change things or is, is to kind of, you know, do what everybody else is kind of doing. Well, I pers I hear your point because this is a very difficult uphill battle, but I think it's one worth fighting. I think it's something that we might not see in our lifetimes. I know I have benefited great from gains that were made by people who fought for things that they never themselves got to see. So mm -hmm. I, and I think also too, the fight for justice never ends. I mean, we both like comic books and superheroes. Like it never is, it's never over. Like the Joker always gets away. Like you have to, all we have to do is just live to fight another day. And of course the fight's going to be harder at some times than others. But I think when it comes to like, even though it's used as a pejorative, being a social justice warrior, like social justice is never fully won. We always have to keep fighting, especially in a democratic society. We have to keep our eye on the ball. So even though it does feel like an overwhelming prospect, I think if we keep in mind that we're also setting an example for the next generation, I know I get a lot of you know, we mentioned the black church at the beginning of this show, and I get a lot of inspiration from how it used to be. And now it seems like so much of black church is trying to be like white people. Whereas originally black church was about us, you know, using that as a place to organize so that we could, you know, get free, like literally through slavery, like organize and get free and get off, you know, get away from the enslavement and oppression and so now we're just opting in for it because we I personally feel like in most black Americans there's this real desperation for white acceptance because it's a part of our genetic mm -hmm. makeup and family that we're missing I guess I don't know like it's interesting that you say that and uh, we're almost at time so I guess I'll kind of wrap with this and then move on to a little bit other but it's interesting that you say that because I don't know if I've always just felt this way or I haven't always felt this way. So let me not say that. But I think because I went to an elementary school where like I actually had 
black teachers and they taught us about Africa and they taught us about like kings and, you know, we were kings, queens. We had, you know, we were more than just these um, niggas in the woods, you know, running around like in huts and shit with spears. Like we actually had like prestige before, well before um, British Columbianism, colonialism and shit ever infiltrated Africa. And so I guess for me, like I never, I, I not not that I never, but I, I started to seek white acceptance less. Like I'm the type of person now that if you if you don't want me to do something, like for instance, if they went back to like you know, no whites or no blacks in this bar or something, I'd just be like, I won't fucking go to that bar then. Like it's just I don't know, but like some people, I feel like feel like they have to fight that or like for instance. Um, the Oscar so white thing a few years ago, like that was a big thing. And whereas like, you know, you do want representation in certain areas. I also feel like why, why, why can we just not make BT awards? You know, I mean, like if you want that respect, like why, why does it have to only be in like the Oscars or these other platforms? Like, so that I don't know. That's kind of where I've been at with it. I uh, hope that makes um, a little bit more sense or brings it to it. But we should deep dive into this. Yeah, I agree. For I sure. agree. Um, but it feels good to have uh, finished our third book of the Bible. And once again, mm-hmm. I I think we've read more of the Bible than most of the Christians we know. Because I feel like the same yeah, sort of yeah, verses yeah. get recycled over and over again. So. Um, I feel like there's been a lot of that, especially these last two books in particular. I feel like a lot of stuff has been over recycled. So it's hard to come in each week and give new analysis on what we read when it's kind of, I feel the same as I did, you know, several chapters ago. I don't know, I feel more ago. disgusted. So that's new. Like, it's like, oh, it's worse than <laughs> I remember. But um, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate everyone for listening. We've been the Bible Breakdown. Um, look us up at Bible Breakdown at Gmail or at Bible Breakdown Podcast. Bible Breakdown Podcast. At gmail.com. And remember, your body belongs to you. Have some fun with it. Peace. <laughs>